Hello there and welcome to A Level Further Maths. Here we're looking at integrating with trig substitution. So we can answer questions from exercise 3D. So let's get started and having a look at the first two examples that we've got here, it doesn't really look like or how we might get trigonometry into this type of question. It has nothing to do with sine or cos at the moment, but it is going to need them in order to be able to integrate it. Now what we've just seen in the previous video is that the derivative of arc sine is equal to 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared, which is exactly what we're integrating here. And we all know that the reverse process of differentiation is integration. So the answer must equal arc sine x. Similar with 1 over 1 plus x squared, the opposite of differentiating is integration. So if you integrate the right hand side, you must get the left hand side. But it's not just a case of knowing how to use the formula booklet in reverse. You do need to be able to show and explain why the integral of these two things on the right hand side will equal the two things on the left hand side. Notice how also on the right hand side, you've got this minus one over the square root of one minus x squared. It is true that if you were to also integrate that one over the square root of minus one minus x squared, you will also get minus arc cos, but generally we use the sine one. All right, let's get started on the first one then. How are we gonna bring arc sine into it? Well, what we're gonna notice is that we've got one minus something squared. And just, uh, just, to, just to remind ourselves about sine squared plus cos squared equals one. If I take away sine squared onto the other side, I get one minus sine squared. So what I'm going to do with this substitution is I'm going to replace x with sine theta. And then I get a 1 minus sine squared theta, which can simplify. So what we also need to do when we introduce a substitution is change the dx as well, work out what that substitutes with. So we differentiate our substitution and rearrange it a little bit, and we get dx equals cos theta d theta. So let's now substitute in x and dx. And we get this expression here. It's 1 over the square root of 1 minus sine squared theta times dx, which is cos theta d theta. Now, we all know that 1 minus sine squared is equal to cos squared. And then the square root of cos squared must be cos. So that when you've got 1 over cos times cos, these two expressions here will just cancel each other out. So we've got now the really difficult integral of 1 d theta. And that's just equal to theta plus c. And now we need to get the question back in terms of x. So if we remember that x was equal to sine theta, inverse the sine theta onto the other side to make uh, theta the subject, and we get arc sine, that's meant to have a c in there, arc sine x equals theta. So the answer to this question is arc sine x plus c. And there we are, that's the answer to this question. Let's move on to the next one then. So it's done in a very similar way, but you'll notice it doesn't have a square root over it. So it's nothing to do with sine squared plus cos squared equals one. It's actually linking to tan. Now let me show you what happens with tan. If we put x equal to tan theta, differentiate it to work out what the dx turns into, that'll be sec squared theta d theta. So let's substitute x in and that dx in as well. And we get this expression here. Now, just a reminder that 1 plus tan squared, there's an identity that links it to sec squared. So what we're going to get here is top and bottom being sec squared, so that they both cancel out to just equal 1. We then integrate that to theta plus c, and then we inverse the tan on the substitution to get arc tan x equals theta. So the answer to this question is arc tan plus c. So that's how we show that these two integrals uh, equal arc sine and arc tan. It is in the formula booklet, however, as well, though. But what happens if you've not just got 1 minus x squared or 1 plus x squared? It's 9 minus x squared or 16 plus x squared. Let's think about how we might deal with that integral. So last time, we you knew that there was a simplification of 1 minus x squared. Um, now what we need here is a 9, so we need some way of making a 9 out of this x squared and for it also to simplify using sine. 
So what I'm going to introduce now is an x equals 3 sine theta. Why 3? Well, because when I square it, that will equal 9. So I've got 9 minus 9 sine squared theta, which will simplify to 9 cos squared theta. Notice how the, both of these numbers that I've chosen are both square numbers, and that's not by coincidence. So you differentiate it and you rearrange to work out what dx is to make sure you substitute correctly in for dx. And then you get to this expression here. When you substitute in x for 3 sine theta, you get 9 sine squared theta. And then on the side, you're going to get 3 cos theta. Now, we all know that sine squared plus cos squared equals 1. We all know that 1 minus sine squared theta equals cos theta. And if we just multiply that by 9, we get 9 cos squared theta as the simplification inside the square root. Now, when you square root this, you're going to get the square root of 9, which is 3, which will cancel out with that 3 up there. And you'll also get cos theta, which will cancel out with the cos theta up there. So once again, we're back at that integral of 1d theta, which equals theta plus c. Then we need to rearrange it using our substitution. x equals 3 sine theta, divide by the 3, inverse the sine, and you get arc sine theta. 3, say so x over 3 equals theta. So the answer to this question is arc sine x over 3. So just a little bit differently to previously, it's arc sine x over 3 when there is a 9 in this position here. So if there was a 25 in this position here, it'd probably more likely be that it'd be x over 5 as the answer to that question. It's slightly bit different with part b. We've got 1 over 16x squared. So go through the same process again. It's going to be 4 tan theta this time because we want it to square and cancel the 16 out as well, or match up with the 16 rather. Uh, do your differentiation to work out what dx turns into, and you're going to get 1 over 16 plus 16 tan squared times 4 sec squared theta. Now we know that 1 plus tan squared is sec squared, so you times everything by 16 and you get 16 sec squared theta. So those sec squared thetas simplify out. But now we've got 4 over 16, so that will simplify to a quarter d theta, a slightly harder integral. That's still just a quarter theta plus c. And now we rearrange theta to we rearrange the substitution to get theta. So we divide by the 4 and inverse the tan, and we get arc tan x over 4 is equal to theta. So it's going to be a quarter arc tan x over 4. So that's the answer for the second one. So not only does the 4 divide the inside of the bracket, just like it did previously, but with the tan one, it also divides the, um, the coefficient at the front as well. And in fact, you get exactly that in the formula booklet. If you're ever asked to integrate 1 over the square root of a squared minus x squared, just like we have here, where a nicely matches up with 9, then your answer is arc sine x over a, or 3 in this case. You have to square root that number. And you see here with arc tan, 1 over a squared plus x squared is 1 over a arc tan x over a. Notice here how we divided by the 4 at the front and inside the bracket. Well, that's why we're dividing by a at the front of the arc tan and inside the bracket in this expression here. OK, so there we are. So that's what's in the formula booklet. Let's now see a few questions where we have to use them in the context of a harder integral. OK, so here are four example questions that we're going to go through. Let's get started on the first one then. The integral of 4 over 5 plus x squared. So the first thing here we're going to do is pull out the 4 or factorise the 4 to the front. We can't factorise anything on the bottom to the front because it doesn't have a common factor of uh, either 5 or x, uh, etc. So we're going to pull out the 4. And then we're just going to apply what we have in the formula booklet. We see here we've got uh, the arctan type integral. We've got 5 matching up with a squared. So it must be the case that a will match up with the square root of 5. And that's fine. So now we're going to do an arctan integration where the answer for a is root 5. So you just need to write then 4 over the square root of 5 arctan x over root 5 plus c, and it's generally preferred that we rationalise our denominators, so it's 4 root 5 over 5, arctan root 5x over 5 plus c. So a nice basic question there, you just do a little bit of factorising and then just application of the formula in the formula booklet. 
Okay, what about the next one then? We've got 1 over 25 plus 9x squared. It's that 9 that's actually quite annoying in this situation because 25 is fine because that will just match up with a squared. It's uh, when we've got a 9 that's a little bit more uh, difficult to manage. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pull out a factor of 9 from the denominator. So that's why I'll be factorising by 1 over 9, because it's 9 coming out of the denominator. And when 9 comes out of the denominator, I'm going to be left with x squared. But also 25 isn't a multiple of 9. So it's just going to have to be written as 25 over 9. And it's not um, standard for mathematicians to write triple tiered fractions in this way, but it will be fine just for the meantime. Because we're now going to really quickly apply the arctan integration formula where a is obviously equal to 5 over 3. So that's why they've chosen two square numbers for us. So apply your um, arctan integral and it's going to be 1 over a. So if a is 5 over 3, then 1 over a is the fraction flipped upside down, 3 over 5. So that's why I've got 3 over 5 arctan 3x over 5 plus c. And then I'll multiply this by 1 ninth, so expand the brackets, and we've got 1 15th arctan 3x over 5. So there we are, that's the answer for part b. Could you have done this question a little bit differently? Yes, you could have done this question a little bit differently. You could have done a cheeky substitution at the start for u equals 3x, and then that would have dealt with the 9x squared in this position here. You'll have had a coefficient at the front of your integral, and you'll have got your 1 over 3 times 1 over 5, but um, that'll make your a uh, 1 over 15, and then you substitute the u back in and get 3x. So an alternate way of doing the question there. Let's move on to part C then. We have um, one, o so 1 over the square root of 3 minus 4x squared. Well, again, it's the 4 that's in front of the x squared that's pretty difficult here. If you want to do an x substitution with u equals 2x, then that's absolutely fine. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pull out the root 4. So it's going to be on the bottom, so I need to pull it out on the denominator of a coefficient at the front, so root 4 is just 2, isn't it? So it's 1 half, and then 1 over the square root of 3 over 4 minus x squared. So because 3 isn't a multiple of 4, I just need to divide it by 4 and make it a triple tiered fraction. It's not particularly nice looking, but it will do for now. Then I'll apply the arc sine integration formula, where 3 over 4 matches up with, x, with, with, with uh, a squared. So I'll do the arc sine integration where a is equal to the square root of 3 over 4, which is root 3 over 2. So I'll apply that integration then and I'll get a half. There's nothing at the front of arc sine, it's just that factor of a half when I pulled out the root 4. So it'd be a half arc sine, and then if it's x over a, and a is a fraction, you just flip that fraction upside down, so it becomes 2x over root 3, uh, and we'd prefer to rationalise our denominator for our answer, so it'd be 2 root 3x over uh, 3. So that's the answer to the third one. Let's have a look at the fourth one. Now the fourth one is a little bit more tricky. We've got the integral of x plus 4 over the square root of 1 plus 4x squared, and in this integral, what we're going to do is we're going to split it up into two separate integrals. We're going to split up the numerator. You can only do it with the numerator, split it up, uh, because if you're adding with the same denominator, then you just add the numerator. So you can only split up an integral on the numerators, if you wish. Keep the denominators on both of them. And the integration technique for the first part will be a substitution integral, u equals 1 minus 4x squared. I'm going to leave you to do all the maths on that and work out what that is. I won't go through all of those steps. That's just integration by substitution. And then for the next one, you pull out the factor of 4 on the denominator. And then when you factorise out the 4 at the front, you're going to be factorising out a 4 and factorising out a half. So when you factorise out the 4 and the half, you're just going to end up with 2 as your coefficient. And then you're going to be using an arc, uh, arc sine integral for the right-hand side. So your answer here 
uh, and it will match up with a equals a half. Your answer here for the integration by substitution will be minus a quarter root one minus four x squared. And then your answer for the arc sine integration will be two for the coefficient and then arc sine uh, it will be x over a half, but when you divide by a half, you get 2. So it's arc sine 2x plus c. So there we are. When you've got a numerator where it's got a multiple of x and then a number on its own, it's generally uh, a good idea if you split those numerators up. As I say, you can only split numerators up. Example, for like for part a, you couldn't split it up into 4 over 5 plus 4 over x squared. You can't split up a denominator. denominator. You can split up a numerator, though. So this is the answer for question D. All right, your turn to have a go at a question on page uh, 67, exercise 3D. I've picked out question 4 for you. Pause the video and give this question a go. Okay, let's work out this integral then. So the first thing I think I'll do is I'll factorize out a third to the front of my integral. Now, because four doesn't have a factor of three in it, I'm just going to have to write it as four thirds. And then it will be plus x squared dx. Then I'll use an arc tan integral. It's going to be one third at the front multiplied by and then my value for a is going to be the square root of this value here. So it would be 2 over root 3. So uh, I'm going to have to do 1 over a at the front, which will be root 3 over 2, arc tan. And then it's 1 over a at the inside the integral, inside the arc tan as well. So that's going to be root 3x over 2 plus c, and then we just expand the brackets, so it's going to be root 3 over 6 arc tan root 3x over 2 plus c. So in this question here, a is represented by root 3 over 6, and b is representing root 3 over 2. So there we are, that's the answer for this question. Make sure you have a go at plenty of the questions from exercise uh, 3D on page 67. Make sure you have a go at all the exam questions, all the problem solving questions, and uh, give it a good go uh, because we're going to be spending a lot of further maths doing lots of integrations. So the better you can become, it's going to pay off loads in the next couple of weeks and months ahead as you study more of further maths. So thanks very much for watching. Hopefully you found this video helpful. Feel free to come back to it in the future and rewind it and watch uh, clips as you wish. And uh, yeah, thanks very much for watching.